We're on our way to the Winchester. This is ghost town. We're going to Mexico. The terrifying island of the dolls. It's going to be our showdown with the demon to end the trip. What the fuck was that? <laughs> <laughs> Today on BuzzFeed Unsolved, we cover multiple cases and visit some of the most haunted, horrifying places in the world in an effort to answer some questions that I've always been curious about. Are ghosts and demons real? And if they are real, can they manipulate, harm, and perhaps even kill the living? Uh, right now, we're in San Jose, California at Sacred Heart Church to talk to Father Gary Thomas in 2005. Father Thomas was sent all the way to Rome to the Vatican to learn the rite of exorcism. A movie was actually based on his experiences in Rome starring Anthony Hopkins. Basically, this dude's the real deal. We're gonna be happy that we talked to him and had his guidance when we go to some of these places. Yeah, I think so. We better, we better stock up on some knowledge here, otherwise we're gonna get murdered by ghosts. You're gonna be thankful that we're meeting this guy later, I promise you. I promise Aww. you, you will regret that statement. Uh, first off, thank you for meeting with us, Father Thomas. Sure. Uh, I read a lot about you. Oh, okay. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, we... <laughs> How many exorcisms have you performed over your career? Formal exorcisms I've probably performed 50 to 75 in 10 years. What is the difference between a ghost and a demon? A ghost would refer to a disembodied human soul. A demon is a preternatural angelic creature that rebelled against God. It's not human. No, it's not. Their life form is dying. They've been dying since the moment they rebelled. And so they are attracted to human beings for two reasons. One, because they are parasitic and they, and they feed off our life form. But secondly, their goal is to take as many of us to hell with them as possible because they already know they've lost. I'm not trying to evangelize oh, I, you. I, I, oh, no, I just got a shiver down no. my spine. <laughs> so can a ghost and a demon both possess or maybe influence the living? Yes and I've had those cases. Where are these homes you're going into? One of them is nearby here, the Winchester Mystery House. Essentially, it's a haunted mansion. And then the next one is a haunted doll island in Mexico City. The last place is perhaps the scariest. It's a house infested with a demon. Do you have any advice for us going into some of these places where we may come into contact with not so nice spirits? Are we still on camera? Yeah. Okay. If these places you're going claim to have spiritual attachments, I would do nothing to invite them into any kind of conversation. I would do nothing to invite them to somehow show themselves or taunt them in any way. You don't want to create a tie with them. So treat it like a fine art museum. I would. Would it be possible for you to perhaps bless some water for something for me to carry? Yes. Do you have something? It's, it's literally just a water bottle. That's but... fine. I can bless it. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In your kindness, hear our prayers and pour down the blessing into this element so that the health obtained by calling upon your holy name may be made secure against all attack through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for sure. sitting down with us and thank sure. you for yeah, it was this is helpful. fascinating. This yeah, was, was super helpful okay. and I feel a lot better about Good. what's about Good. to happen. Good. Like I just feel so comforted right now and where we're about to go is going to be ex the exact opposite. So. Yeah. You're not worried about that at all? No. I'll give you a... Why are we doing this? I don't know if we got this on camera, but he told me, uh, do not be afraid. I, I mean, I won't lie, I'm very scared, but... Okay. Um, do not be afraid. If anything happens, just do not be afraid. That's all you have to keep repeating. He said it a bunch of times in the Bible. Jesus said chill. <laughs> Jesus said chill, yeah, sure. All right, right now we're on our way to the Winchester. Just met with the pastor. Got our holy water, got our tips, our demon tips. Uh, this looks like Disneyland. I wouldn't be surprised if they got cotton candy in there. Yuck it up, man, yuck it up. You're really enjoying this, but when the lights go off, this may be a little different. This is beautiful. Ah, oh, man. You are full of shit if you do not feel strange right now. No, I don't. Such a fucking shyster, dude. <laughs> the hair on the back of my neck is standing over. This is crazy. Right now we're sitting in the bedroom of Sarah Winchester who built this mansion as the result of a terrible tragedy. Sarah actually passed away in this very room in that bed right there. Hell of a bed. I, I assure you in like half of the places you've been, people have died there. People have probably died in the Chipotle we just ate at. 
let's just get into it. Okay. Sarah Pardee was born around 1840 to a very wealthy family. In 1862, in her early 20s, Sarah married William Winchester, whose father, Oliver Winchester, founded the company that made the Winchester Repeating Rifle, a rifle that will become the ultimate weapon of death in the wars to come. In 1866, Sarah and William had their first child, Annie Pardee Winchester, but unfortunately, their daughter would die from a disease called Marasmus only a month and a half later. In 1880, William's father, Oliver Winchester, passed away, leaving the company to William, but William contracted tuberculosis shortly after and tragically died in March 1881, only a few months after his father. Oh. That was the most disingenuous. <laughs> that, was, <laughs> I don't know what... that was real. Okay. Now that we've laid down the facts, let's get into the legend. William's death was almost unbearable for Sarah, who, according to legend, reached out to spiritualists and mediums in Boston to help her understand the deaths of her daughter and husband. Many believe that it was one fateful visit to a particular medium that would change her life. The medium told Sarah that her family was being haunted by the spirits of those killed by the Winchester rifle, and that her family members' deaths were retribution. The medium said Sarah's family was cursed, and that the only way to lift the curse was to move west and build a house, and never stop building. <laughs> well, I think I know the end of this story. <laughs> the good spirits would guide her on what to build, and if she continued building, she could live forever. But if she stopped, the evil spirits that were victims of the Winchester rifle would haunt Sarah forever. If you can live forever, great. But if you have to continue to build a house that entire time, unless you're having fun, which I don't think she well, was. Well, she wasn't like putting on a hard hat and like physically making the house herself. She was delegating. Well, then that's why she didn't live forever. Because she found a loophole. I won't argue that your logic is flawed. I just hate it because it's detrimental to my argument. It's fine. Needless to say, Sarah followed the medium's advice and moved west where she built an eight-room farmhouse in San Jose. It is estimated that 500 to 600 rooms were built, but due to her constant remodeling, only 161 rooms remain, one of which was newly discovered in October 2016. You think the ghost just checked in every, like, three... <laughs> three to five years. Check like, your time we card. see if she's still building that, otherwise we gotta kill her. <laughs> However, what makes this mansion famous isn't the size or amount of rooms. It's the odd and peculiar nature in which they were constructed. It was built this way in an effort to confuse the evil spirits that were haunting and following Sarah. The walkways are narrow and twist and turn around the mansion. There are stairs that lead to the ceiling and doors that open into brick walls. And in one instance, a door known as the door to nowhere that opens to a sheer drop on the outside of the house from the second floor. I can't imagine a ghost would get foiled into falling into these bushes down here, but the uh, thought is nice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now that we've established the legend, let's discuss some possible alternate theories as to why Sarah built the way she did. Oh. One theory that explains some unfinished aspects of the house is Sarah's arthritis that affected her late in her life. One area called the Hall of Fires is a hallway lined with fireplaces. It's purpose to perhaps aid Sarah's arthritis. This could provide a reason for an unfinished staircase as she possibly saw no reason to complete it. But I struggle to see how this explains a door to nowhere. Nobody is building a house like this because they have arthritis. A, I'm saying this is, that a, is, not this a, is, that this is, is a theory. A, I'm just stating the No theories. one says, oh, my knuckles feel a little funny. I'm going to build a house with 500 I, rooms. I hear you, man. I, hear, I agree with you. I'm just saying I, this is a theory that people believe and I'm relaying the theory. That's, Those people are idiots. I mean, you know what the doctor says, nothing's better for arthritis than a two-story drop to the floor down below, right? Right, yeah. Another theory is that Sarah needed a change of scenery and continued to build to keep her mind occupied and off her grief. Now that, yeah. So. Maybe she just wasn't very good at planning. And she did that for her entire life. Yeah, you? for her entire life. Okay. Just what I'm just hey, we all need hobbies. Another theory comes from historian Mary Jo Ignafo, who investigated Sarah Winchester. Ignafo believes Sarah was devoted to building because she was interested in architecture. Ignafo reports that Sarah's own letters reveal that construction stopped at months at a time despite what legend would suggest. Ignafo also explains the unfinished state of rooms as the result of an earthquake in 1906 that caused damage to the house, theorizing that Sarah simply shut down that area of the house rather than attempting repairs. And finally, she also could not find evidence that Sarah communicated with spirits. Although, I will say, I can't imagine communicating with spirits produces any kind of receipt. No, nobody has evidence of that. Okay, I'm just so, saying I yeah, call bullshit Yeah, that. I, I agree with your calling of bullshit. Good, I have, I'm glad we agree on something yeah, for once. Yeah, we've done it. Okay, we've we done it, we've done it. <laughs> Let's go home now. But, enough conjecture. 
Let's look at some of the spiritually active areas of this very unsettling house. Oh, this room looks like a nightmare. That's fun. There's a few rooms in this house that strike me as, okay, this is ghost town. This could be it. Uh... Oops. The way the shadows play with your, with your mind. Well, I, I didn't see something, I heard something. I heard a noise right up there. It came from up there. Probably bats. <laughs> That's also a concern, I mean, but. Ah, oh, bats are no. <sighs> this fucking guy. One room that is particularly important is a room called the Blue Room, or as some know it, the Seance Room, a room where Sarah would allegedly communicate with the good spirits on a nightly basis for building guidance. The room has three entrances and one door that is like a trap door dropping into the kitchen down below. And not surprisingly, this is one of the most active rooms in the house, with reports of organ music being heard, cold spots, and people experiencing dizziness. What is this thing doing? It's making noises. What is... I just took out a brand new battery. I just took off the plastic from it and put it in, and it drained it all the way to zero. This is highly unusual. I've never seen it do this before. I'm just gonna ignore you and fix the issue. I'm gonna lock myself in here with a ghost. I turned my flashlight off. Oh, this is horrifying. I bet Ryan wouldn't do this. Oh, fucking come on, man. God damn it. I knew he was gonna do that and it still scared me. Fuck you. <laughs> The house as a whole has reports of hearing people breathing, footsteps, hearing screws being unscrewed and dropped to the floor, full body apparitions of servants, with the most famous spirit being Sarah herself, often seen in her bedroom. Naturally, one of the creepiest and most active places in the entire house is the basement, where guests and workers often claim to see the ghost of a caretaker named Clyde pushing a wheelbarrow. Why I'm walking in here by my fucking self is beyond me. <sighs> Fuck, I'm so scared. Ah, uh, man. All right, apparently this is where a recurring ghost is seen. Oh, ah, oh God! What are you? Cut. Hey, man, calm down. You piece of shit, Shane. My mic went out, and then I was looking for you. He's crouching in here like some kind of cave creature. And then I, all I did was I went, I was just oh, yeah. coming so to say just, hello to you. You're looking for me while grunting like a zombie. Uh, you almost scared me to death. I'm never gonna forgive you for that. Hope you're fucking proud of yourself. I thought you saw me. I, I bullshit, you thought I saw you. I really didn't think it was gonna work. Sarah seemingly lived a life of solitude. She reportedly wore a dark veil at almost all times to mask her appearance. And in 1922, Sarah died at the age of 83. In the end, the questions remain. Was this just the result of a woman filled with grief? Or were the evil spirits that haunted Sarah Winchester so horrifying that they drove her and perhaps possessed her to build into her death? She probably believed that spirits did say this to her. Whether or not that's a thing that actually happened, I you know. So you're saying it's more along the lines of grief that yeah. produced, perhaps. I mean, she went psychosis. through some some pretty harrowing stuff. Let me just ask you straight out: Do you believe ghosts are real right now? <laughs> uh, no. Why do you not believe ghosts are real? Uh, I've never seen one. Okay. I mean, there's a lot of things that you can't see that you are real. I feel like. What can't I see? You can't see gravity. That's real. Yeah, I can drop an apple. Fuck. <laughs> I guess you'll just you'll just never believe me until Look, something. Look, hey, this whole entire trip, I'm I'm ready. Hey, ghosts. Don't T tussle my hair. I would do nothing to invite them to somehow show themselves or taunt them in any way. Uh, give me, give me a little purple nurple or something. <laughs> Let's have some fun. <laughs> Here I am. Regardless, the real reason behind the creation of the Winchester Mystery House will remain unsolved. I'm so proud of her for doing this, by the way. It's really something. You're the worst. I no, I genuinely, like, this is neat. If I had to spend one more moment sitting in this chair, looking at that silly face, I think I may murder you myself. <laughs> All right, we're getting out of here. Okay. Yeah, let's leave this house. Checking out of the San Jose. Onward. Onward to uh, Mexico. Yeah, why not? So we're going to 
from Mexico, so that's pretty cool. Uh, we don't have to go to our next horrible place until tomorrow, so I think we're gonna enjoy the city a little bit tonight. All right, all right, all right. I don't know if this is a sign, but I'm in the bathroom at this bar, and this mirror literally has blood dripping from it. But I'm gonna go order another beer, so we're good. Salud, salud. We're getting a drink in Mexico, and we ran into the Grimm from Harry Potter. <laughs> this is crazy. Mexico City is such a nice city. Yeah, it is. Shame we're on our way to a nightmare. You're on your way to a nightmare. I'm on my way to a nice <laughs> retreat. Okay, we'll see. Right now we are, uh, <laughs> we're being carted over to the dock. We, we were just sort of put on here, I don't know. I guess that's how easy it is to trick us. <laughs> yeah. Hey, get on, get on, get on! Okay! Oh, fuck! <laughs> that was almost a two-bike trolley collision right there. So, uh, I'm actually not quite sure where we are right now. No, it's fine. You just get it. You just yes. go with the flow, Ryan. That's what people usually say on their way to their death. So we survived our little trolley over here. We're joined by Pepe from Busby, Mexico. Hola amigos. Right now we're on the outskirts of Mexico City in the ancient Aztec canals of Xochimilco, heading to our next location, the terrifying Island of the Dolls. This is a mistake. Oh yeah, there's also a thunderstorm about to roll in, so that's fun. Yeah. But he looks fine, look at the kid's fine. <laughs> and now I feel like a big weenie. You are a big weenie. It's been said that people don't like these canals due to the bad energy. Those who navigate the canals claim the dolls lure them to the island. One Trajanera operator claims that he was even possessed for multiple days when approaching the island. This is the beginning of a horror movie right now. We're here and it's raining. Lovely. Shall we? Yep. You go. You will go first. Oh, I go first. <laughs> right. Okay. It's an ominous cloud in the sky. Some very, very atmospheric thunder. Well, this seems all horrible and awful in general. And this, is so, wow. <laughs> Someone speechless. committed their life to this. Oh, there's spiders everywhere. So that's nice. I see. I'm more concerned about the spiders than the ghosts. Is that right? Yeah. This island is not as pleasant at night. So Pepe, you're telling me you don't come here every weekend? Yeah, where is Pepe? No, I, this is not one of my favorite places. <laughs> in the 1950s in Mexico, Don Julian Santana Barrera was persecuted for being overzealous in his religious beliefs. After that, for reasons unclear, Julian abandoned his wife and child and moved to the island we're at tonight in the Xochimilco canals in the outskirts of Mexico City. The island we're sitting on is a chinampa, a man-made floating garden engineered by the Aztecs centuries ago. Dope. I'm sure they'd be thrilled with uh, what it's become. Yeah, you think this is what they had in mind? Oh yeah, definitely. Oh, monkey. Oh, okay. Monkey? No, I thought I, I thought I got bitten the ass cheeks by a spider. There's a lot of spiders here. Oh, they're huge. Julian lived on this island in isolation, and the story goes that he discovered the body of a young girl off the shore of the island. Julian was reportedly overcome with grief due to the fact that he could not save this little girl. Legend has it that shortly after her body emerged, a doll appeared where her body was. I don't even know how deep this water is. Like if someone were to drown in this, I feel like it looks like it's shallow, but I guess it's deceiving. Wow, this place is creepy. Yep. Oh look, a teddy bear. <laughs> oh fuck, a spider. <laughs> Julian thought the doll probably belonged to the girl, and he hung it up on a tree on the island. His reasons for doing this vary depending on who is telling the story. Some believe he did this to honor the little girl's spirit. Others believe he did this to appease the spirit and protect himself and the island. Another variation is that Julian hung the doll to protect the girl's spirit from demons in the afterlife. Whatever the reason is, the girl's existence has never been officially confirmed. Okay. Wait, the dead girl was The dead girl was not confirmed. Well, what happened to her body? I don't know. 
This is a long time ago. What did he do with it? I don't know. We're in the canals of Mexico. This is like, I don't know how things work. Is that how things I mean, work? It was the 1950s. Probably spiders hate her. <laughs> <laughs> However, Julian didn't stop at one doll. Instead, he began to amass perhaps the creepiest collection in the history of collections. Perhaps he felt the more dolls he hung up, the more protected he would be from the spirit. He'd get along well with old Sarah Winchester. One could say that. He has a lifelong mission to appease the ghosts. I think it's more a protection thing. He just okay. doesn't want right. to die. He but. is wearing a Kevlar vest <laughs> in that case. He would hunt for the lost dolls from the canals and trash near the island, stringing them up in whatever dilapidated condition he found them. And as his island grew, so did the island's reputation, drawing new visitors that would trade dolls for produce grown on the island, consequently creating an extraordinarily bizarre barter system. He probably Fuck the dolls. Can I say that? Oh, I thought you would have a, like some respect for this place, but <laughs> nope. Went in straight with the he fucks the dolls. Yeah, I'm, I'm with Pepe on this. This yeah. is getting way off track. Sorry, okay. Is... The compulsion to collect and hang these dolls was so extreme that those close to him believed he was driven by an unseen force that changed him forever. A force that many believe was the spirit of the young girl, haunting or perhaps possessing him to hang the dolls for 50 straight years in isolation on this island. Though he initially seemed to hang the dolls out of respect and a desire for protection, close friends claim that Julian eventually began to believe the dolls were possessed. Anytime I get even remotely spooked, I just look to the monkey with the sunglasses. <laughs> Let's get a great shot of that thing. Those 50 years bring us to 2001, when the collecting of dolls came to an abrupt end. Julian's nephew, Anastasio, came to the island to help Julian plant pumpkins. According to Anastasio, he left to work on the garden, and when he returned, he discovered the body of his uncle floating in the canal. What's notably chilling is the fact that Julian's body was found drowned in the same spot the girl was found. This is where it went down. This is where he drowned, right here. Cool, 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 cool. Anastasio, who moved to the island after Julian's death, claims the dolls, quote, moved their heads and whispered to each other. End quote. They've got dolls that piss themselves. I mean, do you think these dolls look like they have remotely any kind of technological capability? There, there was a Mickey Mouse over there with a little pull string. Did it work? I don't know. I didn't touch it. I feel like you touched it. Hi, kids. I did touch it. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you think haunts this island? 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 Who do you think haunts this is that a bed? Is that a guy? Wait, what? Should we poke it with a stick? How about you, Shane? You poke it with a stick. Well, there's no one there. Is this a dream come true for you, Ryan? Uh, I can't say that. Don Julian Santana Barrera was 80 at the time of his death. Some people think that the dolls, or the spirits that inhabit them, might have killed Julian. Uh, sure. <laughs> if that's what it's gonna take to get us out of here, then yes, <laughs> I believe in all of this. Put it on Wikipedia, and let's leave. But to finish this off, let's visit the area that has the most hidden activity on the island. It's a shrine that Julian built inside a shed for his favorite dolls, including the original doll that Julian found all those years ago. This is the shed where he kept his shrine and there's candles inside, great. I did bring a little doll of my own. This seems like a good spot to leave it, right? Or should I put it in the lap of the original? This is a fucking nightmare. Oh man. There's the original right here. What, where? The one that looks- Oh, the fuck? What the fuck was that? <laughs> Holy shit balls. <laughs> <laughs> I was just about to put the offering on the original doll and then- Holy shit, look at the spider coming out of it. Oh my god. Oh fuck. Yeah, okay. these are fucking huge. Let's go. This is also his favorite doll right here. Okay, I don't care what his favorite- <laughs> Fuck that. Let's go. <laughs> There's cats right there. Oh fuck me, there are spiders everywhere. Look at the size of that thing. <laughs> I'm gonna go under. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. We've had our fun. We are leaving this island. Where's Pepe? I'm over here. Ah, fuck. Spiders. No, this is the island of spiders, not the dolls. Oh, they're everywhere! <laughs> 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 Jesus Christ, then you just run into possessed dolls? <laughs> 
Toodaloo, Julian. Can't say it was pleasurable. In the end, Julian was remembered as a nice and welcoming man, but the mystery of his eventual death remains. Was it the result of his own compulsive behavior? Or was it the result of the spirit that he claimed haunted him for the last 50 plus years of his life? For now, and perhaps forever, the case remains unsolved. I like spiders. I think spiders are good. I think they're a great little insect or arachnid, uh, but fuck everything about that place. <laughs> I would love to bring Father Thomas to this island. I don't think Father Thomas would be that down. I don't think he would. What makes you think that? Oh, because I don't know if you could uh, exercise spiders away. Yeah. All right, on the way to Kansas. It's going to be our showdown with the demon to end the trip. We've defeated the spiders. We killed all the we spiders. We set that whole island on fire. We survived the spirits of Winchester. I got my holy water ready. I'm ready for this show, Dad. I don't think you are, frankly. Right now, we're on our way to a house widely considered to be infested with a demon that tortured a young family. The grand finale. We're going to the Selly House. Everyone thinks feeling energy is bullshit, but you don't feel strange at all? Not even a little bit? No, not really. Oh shit, what up? I'm taking a selfie with some demons, yo! Hell yeah, what? Great. That'll be good. I'm gonna snap that. What's man? You're insufferable. I'm just working myself up to it, you know. Sure. Are you all right, man? <laughs> get in there. Yeah, I know. I'm just gonna get the fucking holy water. Okay. <laughs> okay. Joke on how you want, and don't ask me for some later. I won't. All they need is some WD-40, and that will. Sure. You're really selling it, huh, little baby? Man, this is nice. You know what a place like this would cost in Los Angeles? It's an arm and a leg. Let's just tell the story of this house. How about that? Ryan, don't look over here. There's a little stuffed animal. Don't want to. Right now, we're sitting in the living room of the Sally house. Our sleeping bags are right there because we foolishly plan on sleeping here for some stupid reason. I've lived my life by one adage, and that's don't fuck with demons. It's an adventure. I just love seeing you squirm. Let's just get into okay, why this tell, house is. Tell your spooky story. Located at 508 North 2nd Street in Atchison, Kansas, the Sally House is the ultimate haunted house and widely considered to be one of the most haunted places in America. Built between 1867 and 1871, this house has had three deaths inside its walls. Michael Finney in 1872, William True in 1918, and Agnes True in 1939. But while the deaths have perhaps added to the house's ghostly inhabitants, the real evil comes from something much different. All right, I think he's here. So we call the paranormal investigator over. <laughs> sure. Hey. How's it going, man? Ryan. Eric Ensbrenner. Shane. Nice to meet you. I think this is all bullshit. It, <laughs> half of it is. I brought a little bit. I'm not going to communicate with shit. I would do nothing to invite them into any kind of conversation. We are. You're already doing I'll it. Be, During the I'll be standing in the background. While multiple residents of the Sally House have experienced paranormal activity, it wasn't until the 1990s when Deborah and Tony Pickman moved in that the activity was fully realized. What follows is based on their first-hand account of what started as a small haunting and later developed into a living nightmare. Deborah and Tony Pickman moved in on December 31st, 1992. The haunting started small. Lights in their house would dim. Their dog would bark incessantly at the entrance to the nursery and their newborn baby would wake up every hour, quote, as if someone was playing with him, end quote. The Pickman's neighbor could see the nursery window from her house and eventually asked Deborah why she kept the light on in the nursery all night long with the baby sleeping in there. This question came as an icy shock to Deborah, who always turned the light off. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it was a little weird, right? Yeah. All right, <laughs> anyways. 
Things got especially weird on July 14th, 1993, when Deborah, Tony, and her sister Karen discovered all the stuffed animals in the nursery organized into a neat circle back to back in the middle of the room on the floor. The three of them figured it was one of them playing a practical joke, so they put the animals back, turned off the light, and went downstairs. To their horror, when they returned, not only was the light on, but a bear was knocked off its chair and laying on its back on the ground. <laughs> We better get out of this house. Somebody knocked our little bear out of his little wicker you're chair. Telling, you're telling me you wouldn't be uh, unnerved by going upstairs and seeing a bunch of stuffed animals organized into a little cult circle when no one did it? So who, did, uh, I don't know. After that, like anybody would, they packed up some stuff, took their baby, and left the house to stay with Tony's parents. Did they bring the bear? I don't believe they brought the bear. I mean, there's, I can't imagine they would bring the bear. While they were leaving the house, Tony felt a sharp sting in his back. When they lifted up his shirt, they discovered three long scratches. Tony would continue to get viciously scratched as time went on, and in one instance, a scratch manifested while on video. The Pikmins eventually returned to a psychic, who picked up on a presence named Sally. Sally, if you're here, or any spirit that's here, let's communicate. Here's a flashlight. If you can turn the flashlight on and let us know you're here, that'd be great. It's a little monkey. <laughs> we saw one of those on the island of the haunted dolls. According to Deborah Pickman, on the morning of October 31st, 1993, Tony went to grab a glass of orange juice in the kitchen. When he turned around, he saw a little girl in early 1900s clothing. Shortly after, he sketched what he saw for Deborah. All right, we are in the kitchen. Please turn the light on for us. Please don't. Please don't do it. Demon. Stop calling it that. Demon! Stop it! Stop talking to it! No, I just want to talk to the demons! We met a pal named Father Thomas. Uh, he told us not to talk to you, but I think you guys are swell. I would do nothing to invite them to somehow show themselves or taunt them in any way. If you like the guy staying here, turn the light on. You're fucking crazy, Shane. If you don't like us, turn it on. Please don't turn it on. Please don't. Ah! Ah! Oh shit! No! <laughs> Where's my holy water? Where's my holy water? If you actually don't like us, please just turn it on. I don't think I don't think they have the power to turn it back on again. Frankly, I really think they don't. Ryan, oh! <laughs> are you fucking kidding me? What the? Keep in mind, we have to spend the night here. <laughs> Please turn the light off for us, spirits. Don't you fucking do it. Turn it all the way off. No, 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 Thank no. you. Oh, oh, fuck, no, no, oh my god. What Please try. This? Oh my god. You should have never talked to it, dude. That's a car going by, it's okay. No, that's the fucking flashlight rolling in the background. Look, it's coming back. Oh yeah, it is. It's a flashlight, it rolls, it's cylindrical. But it shouldn't roll back and forth like what? that. What? You should have never talked to it, dude. What is wrong with you? In what may be a curious coincidence, a former resident who lived in the house shortly before the Pikmin said, quote, my daughter was five at the time. She had an imaginary friend, Sally. I would scold her for something and she would come back and tell me, I didn't do that, Sally did it. Or Sally told me to do it. When shown Tony Pikmin's drawing 11 years after they moved out of the house, the daughter identified it as her imaginary friend from her childhood. Do not be afraid, do not be afraid, do not be afraid, do not be afraid, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. <laughs> hey, just take a, take a sit down, it's fine. Okay, well, don't hurt your... Oh, fuck, okay, it's not a... I mean, you're sure, we don't know how to explain that. Maybe it's just, you know, flashlights are funny like that. The Pikmins also reported fires that would start on their own. In fact, two former residents before the Pikmins reported fires starting inexplicably in the room that would eventually become the Pikmins nursery. The activity continued to escalate beyond fires, however. A lamp was thrown at Tony's mother. Tony reported hearing scratching behind his bed. Quote, almost like you had an animal digging to get out of the wall, end quote. And in one instance, Sally appeared in the room and grabbed Tony's wrist, burning dark red finger marks into his arm. At this point, Tony believed, quote, we're dealing with something way beyond a little girl, end quote, and begged to leave the house. Yet Deborah, who at this point never witnessed anything alarming, didn't share the same desire. This was the 90s. People had like video recorders, you know, 
I mean, the scratches all happen on camera, but yeah. here's the thing. This is what I fucking love about like paranormal evidence. People are always clamoring for it, right? Like, where's the evidence? And then when the evidence finally is there, it's like, fake. Things eventually went beyond physical terror, however. Here's another quote from Tony. Quote, it got to the point where I, when I was in the house, I could not think any happy thought. It was just strictly, I wanted to hurt her. I, I was a whole different person. That something could come inside me and make me capable of doing that, I just, it tears me up. As much as I hate to say it, I'd plan on slitting her throat. Jesus Christ! <laughs> if you slit my throat tonight, I'm gonna have a hard time forgiving you for that. Will you haunt me for the rest of my life? No, because I'll be dead. Well, Ghosts aren't real. Oh, okay. Fair enough. In 1994, the Pikmins finally moved out of the house. But at this point, you're probably wondering who is Sally. From what I could find, records show that a Sally Isabel Hall did indeed live in the house in 1905, but she was actually a 34-year-old black woman. Wait, wait, what? Hear me out, hear me out here. Okay. okay. While this may seem damning at first, the implications of this are actually quite horrifying. If there was, in fact, never a girl named Sally who lived here, then who or what was this alleged spirit presenting itself as a little girl named Sally? That question led me to this piece of research. Sometimes, inhuman presences or demons will allegedly present themselves as humans that are physically flawed. Or in some cases, perhaps like this one, they may appear as children. That demon's racist. He was like, oh, there was a, a black lady who lived here? Wait a minute, no, mm. I can't haunt with that. Well, demons what about a little, little white girl? A little blonde one, I'll give her pigtails. Demons don't- Fuck that demon, he's whitewashing the history of this house. He's exactly what's wrong with Hollywood. Demons don't present themselves as adults. That's what I was saying, they present themselves as Ever? No, the an sounds... entity, like an entity that's not human, it needs energy, it needs souls to feed off of, so if you need that, you wouldn't immediately come out with the horns, you come out with the little girl, that makes sense to me. Whatever, demon's racist, I don't respect this demon. But what really suggests the presence of a demon is something that occurred in the basement well after the Pikmins left the house. A female tenant, her husband, and their children moved into the house and reported no paranormal activity. But on a surprise visit from landlord Les Smith, he allegedly discovered something terrifying in the basement. A large pentagram on the floor, an altar, a large black kettle, and a black robe. A pointy hat, a broomstick, hey man, three newts, this is a what lizard tongue, <laughs> eyeballs. That's it's what he found. Many believe that this female tenant was a Satan worshiper, performing sacrificial rituals. To this day, there's a black mark on the floor where the alleged rituals took place. Consequently, many believe the demon lives in this basement, specifically in the hole in the back wall. Which brings me back to something Father Thomas told us about demons. I was reading about something called infestation, mm -hmm. where like, a demon will just take hold of a house. So if that family was involved in a satanic cult and they were um, doing other kinds of rituals and spells that are part of the cult, it would not at all surprise me if there was something demonic still attached because that's where that cult basically had a home. And it opened the portal there. Absolutely. Yeah. So if you're there in the hole, you must speak to us or communicate with us. Turn that flashlight on. Please don't. Please don't. Please don't. That's me. Sorry. Oh, thank God. Okay, thank you. So God. we're giving off high MF here because of this. Whoa. Oh, that thing. So that's a false read. But since there's a lot of electricity coming through the hair, that's saying they can feed a spirit. Oh, that's good. Let's feed it more. Why not, right? He's hungry. If you want to eat my heart, turn that light on. I think this demon's a wimp. He's lost his mind. You wanna lay on the pentagram? Here we go. You're out of your mind. Rock and roll, buckaroo. If you wanna eat my heart, turn that light on. If you wanna eat Ryan's heart, don't, don't turn that light on. Stop putting me in your shit. Our old pal, Ryan Bergara. Stop. We're a package deal. Oh, the light's on, Ryan. Look at the lights. Demon, we got him. Jesus Christ. Turn it off for us, please. For Ryan's sake. Ah! No! <laughs> Fuck this house, dude. <laughs> Fuck this house so hard. Well, now we get to spend the night here. Here's a fun fact about sleeping here. One past resident described waking up to a, quote, grotesque and gaunt, dead-looking individual not only laying next to her, but staring at her, end quote. 
Here's the thing, I discount almost 100% of I saw it in the middle of the night things because sleep paralysis. Oftentimes most people wake up and see shit. If I wake up tonight and there's this grotesque looking things laying next to me and just staring at me with its fucking stupid beady eyes open, I I'm gonna shit myself. <laughs> <laughs> There's gonna be poo in the sleeping bag. And I'm just gonna carry out the sleeping bag. You just gonna roll it up. Put it roll in the garbage can. Put it in the garbage can. My big fucking poo burrito. And that's, that's. <laughs> I'm never coming back. I'll leave all the shit. I'm fucking never coming back. The fact that we're sleeping in this house after what we saw is astounding. I'm proud of you, Ryan. Time to sleep. Lights out, I guess. Fuck. So we're gonna sleep here all night. Uh, it's gonna be dreadfully quiet. You know, it's weird thinking what's directly below us is that basement. Why would you say that? I'm, just... I'm gonna get closer to you, I don't care. Okay, okay. <laughs> every little pin drop that you hear, every little creak, it's gonna make your butthole tighten. Do not be afraid, do not be afraid. Do not... I thought I saw something move out of the corner of my eye. I will stay in this house till 5 a.m. If I sleep, I sleep. If I don't, I don't. I think it would be a sleep full night for me if it weren't for you. Oh, the light went out outside. Did you turn Does, that out? No. Yeah, you did. I didn't, no. No, oh, weird. And nope. I'm man enough to admit this is not this is not happening tonight. I can't it's not happening ever it's not happening ever. <laughs> okay, man. Look, it's okay. <laughs> I think I just blacked out. You, you're giving up? Don't say it like that. Well, I mean that's what's happening. Here's what here's what I'll do. The witching hour is at three, right? Why is it three? That's to mock the Holy Trinity. Sometimes you'll hear three knocks, that's a demon. When it hits three o'clock, uh -huh. I will be quiet for three minutes. No, you won't. I will. Can you give me time updates, like one minute, two minutes? Yeah. Three, two, one. That's a minute. That's another minute. Jesus Christ. Are you freaking out? Yeah. The wave of relief that just is over, just sweeping over my body right now. Oh, there's a part of me right now that feels foolish for getting up, but. You should feel foolish. Are you trying to convince me to stay in here? Well, no, I just think it's silly to just give up at the last minute, but whatever, you know, it's no big deal. Look, you've made up your mind, you're done. You don't have it in you. <laughs> Stop saying that, you're making me no, want to do it. I'm just saying, you don't have it in you, it's fine. Do not be afraid. You're right, I don't have it in me. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> let's go. All right. Fuck you. I hope you fucking looking at this now, motherfucker. Did you just call the demon a motherfucker? No, I don't give a shit now. I'm gone. <laughs> I got my laptop, I got my holy water, I got the card that I need here. Peace out, bitch. Not even this, a single part of me feels bad about leaving. <laughs> go fuck yourself, Sally House. You were truly awful, and I hate you. It's the happiest moment of my life. I would think it'd be the most embarrassing, but... Nope, it's, I'm pretty happy. There's the house. Cool, fuck that house. Goodbye. In the end, it's up for debate on what haunts the Sally house. The Pikmin seem to believe it's a demon. And in my opinion, nothing I experience suggests otherwise. But as always, the answer will remain unsolved. It's been a couple days. We've had some time to recuperate and actually uh, get a gauge of what we saw or think we saw. Really a lot to process. <laughs> you know, the first two occasions I wasn't sure. My confidence was starting to waver, even at the last place, till like about halfway through. But when that flashlight turned on, I think that's a uh, proof positive. Ghosts and or demons are real. There's no other explanation for it. No, I just think it was a, a wonderful coincidence. And I'm glad it happened because we got to see you uh, turn into a babbling mess. Coincidence five times in a row. He screwed the flashlight to right in between the on and off. Even if it's on the edge, like the very edge, it still needs just a little bit of a push. <laughs> no, it doesn't. And you know who gave it that push? 
Casper the Friendly Ghost? Perhaps. <laughs> Look, I'm happy to let you believe in this, because I think it's fun that you believe in it, because if we go to more places, it's going to be fun to watch you freak out some more. So, great. We're never going to agree. Are demons and ghosts real? Can they influence people? Let's just call it unsolved. How about that? No, but we sure had fun. All right. Let's get out of here. Finish my beer, actually. Yeah, finish your beer. <sighs> Taking this with me, too. He looks, like, really happy. Look at that little face. <laughs> he looks like he's eating grapes. These fucking creaks in this house are driving me insane. What's in here? Well, what is that? That's a mirror. <laughs> oh, there's a guy in there who looks just like me. <laughs> oh, if I turned the light back on and there was something standing right Isn't there. Isn't it crazy how the light over there was just, like, pooling? Yeah, in? there was a pool of light over there. That's really interesting. Let's get the fuck out of here. <laughs> this is insane. This is one of the craziest experiences in my life. Can you imagine what it's going to be like coming back at night? I don't want to imagine that. Can't you just let me enjoy the moment for once? No. Father Thomas would be so proud of us. I don't think you would, to be honest. Why? Because you directly disobeyed everything he said. You laid on the floor <laughs> on the pentagram with your belly bared for the demon to smack. Yeah. And, and he didn't. What a trip it's been. We've seen a lot of stuff. We've seen spiders. We've seen ghouls. 